My name's Malin, I'm a targeted individual, and I'm tortured every day by black gang stalkers. Okay, this is not hate speech. And if this is uh, targeted as hate speech by Google, I'm going to have to go to the appropriate uh, uh, structures such as the Constitution. Okay, now this is uh, something that has to be exposed. This is black psychopathy. Okay, it is in this country. I am tortured by black psychopaths. I've been targeted for 20 years and I have never been abused in those 20 years of gang stalking uh, <clears throat> in comparison to what the blacks are doing to me. I'm a black woman that's 49 years old. <clears throat> I'm an artist. I love animals. I'm an environmentalist. I'm a feminist. I love my family. I love the human race. I garden. I, I, I mean, like everything about me is, uh, it's, it, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm not gonna lie so that the the gang stalkers can get these black people that are smoking crack to torture me. <clears throat> I, I'll just give you a comparison because I've given this comparison and they're they're gonna try to control my speech. Uh, I lived in this house for about nine years. And I've been tortured, crippled, injured, hospitalized, come close to death with a tube down my throat. And um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I didn't think it could get any worse. It's gotten worse. Um, I don't know. I've probably bought about 100 books, if not more. I have bought, I have spent so much money and so my, I mean, I have consumed so much stuff. I have made so much artwork. Um, I almost got to the point where I could, you know, support myself with my art. That's with white targeting. With black targeting, I can't paint. I don't really read books anymore. Um, I don't have friends over for dinner. They're so psychotic and scary and creepy that I basically have decided that I'll just go to my job, concentrate on my job, make money, save it, and try to uh, pay for some investigative uh, ways to get rid of them. That I'm going to basically work to free myself. <clears throat> I have black men that were uh, homeless picking my thoughts picking my memories apart, telling me how to clean my home. They're in their 50s. Michael Warden, Edward Hamilton, Charles Avery, Daryl Washington, Andrew, Todd, Virgil Pearson. Those are all black men who are torturing me and raping me. Two sodomites. One from Five Oaks, Google that. One from uh, the Soda Bass Projects, Google that. They both have AIDS and they've both molested children. They have venereal diseases. One has been periodically homeless from smoking crack and was a prostitute who transmitted the AIDS virus to black uh, customers of prostitution in, in the Dayton area. They're black. Let's go over the black females. Natasha Williams, Keisha Brown, last name Miller, first name might be Yvonne. Okay, they have raped me repeatedly thousands of times in three years and tortured me. <clears throat> Let's go over the white males. Todd, Chris, Brian. That's not even, uh, th th there's been hundreds of them. Hundreds of white men torturing me, raping me. White females, I only have one name, uh, Lori, and that could be fake. Lori Patterson, I doubt that's her last name. Since I've been in Kettering, at the, in this address, I've had hundreds of not a thousand people look through my eyes and torture me. I've been shot with directed energy weapons. Uh, I'm, I'm basically going to get to the point, and a perp just said that, why don't you live stream, because they're being sarcastic. <clears throat> they're trying to steal my looks. 
the blacks are so psychotic and so jealous that um oh my god my neighbor just came out in his underwear to get his uh mail <laughs> he looked over here to see if anybody was looking that's funny he's in pretty good shape oh my god his wife is lucky anyway so not every neighbor's after you so just stop um so black psychopathy bell hooks basically exposed this and said you know black men are torturing black women in the country and she is brave and she has been punished by many black men for speaking her mind and speaking the truth uh go look at bell hooks lectures buy her books this this is this stuff is real black men are torturing black women across the country they are driving us insane and now they are gang stalkers they are uh, destroying my brain worse than the white men they are destroying my brain they are determined to destroy my life black men are determined to kill me they want to kill me they're from Dayton Ohio Montgomery County these black men want to kill me Andrew who's a drug dealer who's delivering cocaine and crack to the white gang stalkers in Kettering using Anton's cab service said I thought we agreed to sacrifice her and her man in that house. That they are viewing my home. Torturing me in my sleep. My sex life is over. I'm out of shape. I've broke broken bones. <clears throat> my mother, I miss my mother. My mother's targeting. Since I moved to Canada, my mother's targeting has gotten worse. It's a racist, white supremacist, sexist community. Not every gang stalking community is the same. The black men are even trying to reference my language to force it back into me so they can prove to the white man that they can control their black women. They actually think I'm their black woman. A crackhead who raped a girl. I don't think so. Now I'm going to read something from Sisters of the Yam, Black Women in Self-Recovery, Bell Hooks. I'm just going to pick anything. Um. <laughs> you know, reading out loud helps. So, um. you know, the, the black consciousness, the black the black people, uh, the we. There is no we. <laughs> there has never been a we. It's your, it, there has never been a we. If there was a we, why are black people trying to kill me and I'm black? drug addicts torturing me I have a sodomite right now he tortures me at work he's he's actually sitting off in the distance somewhere in, in a black neighborhood my neighborhood is white it's another town why is he in Kettering gang stalking me I just want to say a little neighborhood gossip. I have a new neighbor. I'm always paranoid. They, they move in, they move out, they move in. So um, she's obese and she lives with twins. And they're in really good condition. And they're exercising. He's gone for a walk. He started going for walks with his brother and his friend. And um, his, the female at home is obese. I think her obesity has inspired him to not be become grotesque. So that's you know good for him. You know there's so many like overweight people. Um, 
I'm now I'm now I'm, I'm strained. You know, don't don't become a like overeater. I became an overeater uh, from the anger from the blacks torturing me. Wrong move, because now I look horrible. Um, don't do that. Don't don't do that. It, it, drink your calories instead. You know, have a have a margarita. Don't sit there and eat cookies all night. Anyway, so bell hooks. <clears throat> I, I just think that she's an amazing person. All right, this is Sisters on the Yam, page 40. One paragraph, and then I'm going to stop. Uh, Life-threatening stress has become the normal psychological state for many black women and black men. Much of the stress black people experience is directly related to the way in which systems of domination, racism, sexism, and capitalism in particular disrupt our capacities to fully exercise self-determination. It is a tra tragic irony that many more black people suffer undue anxiety and stress as a result of racial integration. Elsewhere, I have talked about the fact that coming home to black neighborhoods that were not controlled by a visible white presence provided black people the necessary space to recoup and regain a measure of sanity. The power of these segregated communities was that they were places where black folks had oppositional worldviews that helped us sustain our integrity our very lives. There are many segregated communities still, but they are not often constituted as communities of resistance. Now, many black people work at jobs in integrated settings where the presence of racism may bring out attention to the work setting. And then we must encounter the same terrorizing tension in banks, stores, supermarkets, or public transportation. Many black people, especially the underclass and working poor, feel as though they are powerless to change most things in their lives and yet they have to survive. They have to find the wherewithal to get up in the morning and make it happen. The whole process of profound is profoundly stressful. It is profoundly stressful. And a perp just said in my head, actually, she's right. And I had thought, um, oh, well, I, well, this is wrong. Is this is this, is this statement true? The, the hive is integrated. Kettering, a racist, white supremacist, rapist cult in, in the gang stalker, in the gang stalking uh, crime. The West Side of Dayton, black, poor, ignorant. Now, it, their gang stalkers are primarily drug addicts that don't, you know, are on speed, cocaine, PCP, alcohol. They've come together for whatever reason, and it's the worst thing ever. All, everyone's, every single person involved, their life is worse. It's almost ruined. And they refuse to let go of each other. They refuse to let go. That the black psychopath is so filled with self-hatred that he doesn't want to let go of his slave master. 